Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Node.js course. This section is the most important and advanced section of this complete course. In this section, you are going to learn how to implement authentication, authorization and security in your Node.js application. Authentication and authorization is all about users signing up and logging into our application and allowing them to access certain protected parts of our app that are not accessible to not logged in users. Now, in order to implement authentication and authorization in our Node.js application, we are going to use a very modern technique called JSON Web Tokens or JWT in short. But before we talk about authentication and authorization, first we need to create some users for our app. And in order to create users, we need a user model. And that's what we are going to do in this lecture. We are going to create a user model. So let's go to VS Code. And in the models folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new model. So I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to call this file user model. And it is going to be a JavaScript file. We have learned that in order to create a model, first we need to create a schema. Right. And based on that schema, we create a model. Now, in order to create a schema and a model, first we need to require the mongoose package. So I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it mongoose. And I'm going to require the mongoose package here. Now, using this mongoose object, let's go ahead and let's create a schema. So again, I'll create a variable. I will call it user schema. And to create a schema on this mongoose object, we can call the schema. So before this, we also need to use the new keyword because the schema here is a constructor of schema class. Okay. So you can see. It is a constructor. So in order to call this constructor and create a new object of this schema class, we need to use new keyword. And to this schema constructor, we need to pass an object. And in there, we can define our schema. So what do we need for our user model? For the user model, we are going to have a name property. We are going to have an email property. So we are going to use this email to log in the user or sign up the user. We want to have password field. We want to have confirm password field. And we also want to have a photo field. So we also want to allow users to upload their profile pic. Okay, for now, we only want these five fields. So let's go ahead and let's create a schema for these five fields. So first we want to have a name field. This name field is of type string. And this name field should be a required field. So here let's specify an array. Let's set this required to true. And if the value for this name is not provided, let's also specify a validation error message. So here let's say, please enter your name. Next, we also want to have an email field for this user model. And we are going to use this email field to log in users to our application. Here, I'm not going to have a separate username field for that. Okay, we are going to use user's email as a username to log in the user to the application. So here again, the type should be string. Then it should be a required field because we are going to use this field to log in the user. And here, let's also specify a validation error message. And let's say, please enter an email. Then what we also want is we want this email field to be unique. So each time a new user sign up to our application, he should provide a unique email ID. No two users can have the same email ID which they have used for signing up. So here, let's also use this unique property and let's set it to true. And finally, what we want is, we also want to use this lowercase and we want to set it to true. Now, this lowercase, it is not a validator. All it will do is it will transform the email value to lowercase before saving it into the database. And finally, to validate that the provided email is a valid email, we want to have a validator which will validate the email field is proper or not. And for that, we are going to use this validator library. So when we were talking about validating our schema, that time I explained about this validator library. So we are going to use the same one. I will copy this and we are going to require it in this user models file. 
okay and here i am going to set the validate property and here let's specify an array so what do we validate here we want to validate the email field so we want to use the email validator so we can say validator dot is email and if the email field is not valid we want to specify a validation error message and let's say please enter a valid email okay next we also want to have a photo field and it is going to be of type string and here i'm not going to specify any validation or required field here because i don't want to make this photo field as mandatory field that's why i'm just specifying the type of this field i don't want any other validation on this photo field next i'm going to have a password field so this password again the type here is going to be string this password is a required field so let's set it to true and let's also specify a validation error message here let's say please enter a password now what i also want is i want the password field to be minimum of eight characters so whenever a user tries to set a password he should have at least eight characters in the password which he want to set so for that i am going to specify another validator here which is min length and here i will set it to eight by the way this photo field here for this photo field i have specified the type as string that's because inside this photo field we are going to store the path of the photo where it is stored basically we are going to store photos somewhere in the server's local directory and the path of that photo will be saved in this photo field okay finally let's also have this confirm password field okay here also the type is going to be string and then it is going to be a required field that's because while signing up this password and confirm password must be same right so here let's specify the required as true and let's also specify a validation error message and here let's say please confirm your password all right so this is our user schema let's save this and now based on this user schema let's go ahead and let's create a user model so in here let me go ahead and let me create a variable i'm going to call it user and we are going to create a user model based on this user schema for that on the mongoose let's call this model function and in there first we need to specify the name of the model which we want to create here we want to create a user model and then we need to specify the schema based on which we want to create our user model in this case we want to create this user model based on this user schema okay so based on this this user model will be created now let's simply go ahead and let's export this user model from here module dot exports and here we want to export the user model let's save the changes again so somewhere we have some error let's check what is that so error query serve okay so i think my network is not enabled so it is not able to connect to the database and that's why we have this error let me connect to the internet again and let's now save the changes so now there is no error and the db connection is successful all right so here we created a user schema and based on that user schema we have created our user model now in the next lecture let's go ahead and let's use this user model to create new users in our mongodb database for that we need to set up a controller and a router in order to create new users let's do that in our next lecture